It's Survivor's Friendly Fire Show, episode 232, for sort of the end, the middle-ish, I don't know, of March 2023, not a fact-based show. I am one of your co-hosts, Steve Wright, joining me, as always, my friend, your friend, Ben Salter. Hi. We're back. You'd think I'd be yeah. better at this by now. I'm not. It's... 234 episodes, not four, what are we, 32 episodes <laughs> in. You just said it and I forgot immediately. Yeah, you think you would be better, but you're you're still trying, so I admire that. I think you did that error to make me feel better about myself, so I appreciate you taking a hit to um to mm. try to to let me save face. I I appreciate that immensely. Uh, how did you have a long weekend? That's just passed or no? Yeah, we you get it different everywhere in the country. Ours is for Adelaide Cup. Yours would be for Labor Day probably. Uh, which is a different day wherever you are. But yes, it was nice to have a three-day weekend. It reminds me that every weekend should be a three-day weekend because it didn't feel long enough. But now we have that nice, cushy, post-long weekend, four-day work week. So we're already well into it. And yeah, I can get used to this. The, yeah, well, the four-day work week has, you know, seems to have a lot going for it. One of my two cats went insane over the weekend. So we All were right. basically just managing cat aggression, which... It is a thing. I know you have Banjo, your your cute little dog. A psycho dog. Yeah. So same 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 problem, but different. So hopefully you had a, a more restful weekend than I did. Um, but that's fine. Yeah, it's it fine. Is, it is what it is. We also have mm. a game that we're playing that we can't talk about yet. But like, it's made everything that I've had to deal with that little much better because I just get to go and like go off into a world that I'm excited about. Yeah, you get to play a game. That's why we're here, Steve, to talk about the fun, <laughs> not just the uh, the constant work and the the full schedule. But that is what I would like to speak to you about because you're a you're a man who plays a lot of games, probably the most of anyone I know. Insane gamer score, uh, and you you still review a lot yourself, and you play a lot of the biggest hits. I also play quite a lot, maybe not quite as many as I used to, but certainly certainly most of the big hitters. And I'm constantly having issues. One juggling multiple games at once because i have a very bad memory and i forget where i'm up to and how these games control and why x is in a different spot in every platform i use uh and so i would love some tips how do you manage juggling multiple things at once are you a commit to one game and finish it kind of guy is that what you normally do or do you bounce between them i i can't bounce for the same reasons that you're basically talking about i i I do play a lot, but I, I laser focus. And I think that's part of my, mm. I don't think I have ADHD, but I think I'm very close to like, I could probably like bluff it if I needed to. I will, I will laser focus on a game to the point where I probably shouldn't as much as I do. Um, but then once it's out of the way, I can go to the next one and the next one and the next one. And it, it's for those reasons of, of control schemes and just like to the point of if you're feeling the groove of a game and you're getting very good at it. it. Yeah. Mm. If you switch to a completely different genre or something else, I feel like you kind of lose some of those like very adept muscle memory skills. That mean you'll find an easier time with what you're playing. So as you just, you know, play one thing from start to finish, you get very good at it and it makes it easier to finish faster. Uh, and like for the same reason that once like i think we've talked about this before if a game puts out dlc like seven or eight months after the base game comes out and you jump back in you're really excited and you like start to play you just kind of go how does this work what am i doing what is going on so yeah. that's why i almost never play dlc i'm gonna make an exception for elden ring but besides that pretty much never i played like the gta 4 expansions like 10 years after they came out because it was just just the way to do it. And that was mainly because of the Ballad of Gaetano. We had a great pun, <laughs> former host of the show, and I hadn't actually played it. So I eventually did, many years later when it came to Back and Pat. Uh, but yeah, see, I, I think I start too many games. Like I've got probably four or five on the go at the moment. And oh, I so know some of you're them like I a won't bouncer. Go to. You're a I'm bouncer. I'm a bouncer. Ooh. Because I, I sometimes have time to, to kind of play something and then something new comes out and you want to be there like on day one. I think Game Pass makes this worse because it has new stuff in there and you play it briefly and then you buy something and so you want to play that properly and then occasionally throw something into review in the mix. So like Metroid Prime Remastered came out of nowhere and I stopped everything to play that. And I, I laser focused on that because I, I wanted to finish it. And I know it's only like a 10 hour game. But then you have something like Hogwarts Legacy, which I've 
I could say I finished now, like I'm powered through the main story, but there's so much optional stuff in there. And it's kind of, do I want to go and do some of that? Or am I calling it here? And then I've got something like Pokemon Violet, which I've just been chipping away at. And when I get into it, I play for like maybe two hours and I, I make some progress and I kind of get used to the really terrible performance. But then I go back to it and I play for a minute and compared to everything else, it's just it just runs so badly that I'm like, no, I'm out. And so I might have to call it on that soon. It's a, like, it's not going to get patched and improved. They've sold 20 mil odd. They don't care. Uh, or do I commit to it? Do I say everything else is on hold and I'm just going to play this? Like it's, it's a struggle. And then there's the main one, the big boy, Dark Souls, which I've been playing like the whole year and last year. And I must, I'm so close to the end. I know that I am. And it's, I played again just before we got the game that we can't talk about, but we will talk about next week. And so I was, I was like, I'm going to do it this weekend, but then I didn't because of that. And I, it took me a good hour to get used to like who my guy is and why I've set up this equipment like this and how do I block again and like just getting in the groove. And it's a very specific game, but it's, I can see why you'd fall away and see, I'm having this problem with every game. Like I, maybe I do need to stick, stop bouncing, but it's, it's tough. Well, what you've just said is my experience with Dark Souls 3 to the point where I haven't played that in a good long while. But I mean to I mean to finish it, but I'm I'm scared to jump back in because I know I'll have to relearn everything mm. and have a very, very poor time for an hour or two as I kind of build that memory back up. Um, whereas like a game like Hogwarts Legacy, really, it's pretty fluffy. There, there are games that you can kind of leave on the side and jump back into at all times. And I think Hogwarts is mostly one of those games because it's like find the flu place, go and collect the thing, capture yeah. a beast. But then when you get into combat, that's where it gets a little bit dicey again because the combat I don't think is very good. And you have to kind of be in that mentality of, oh yeah, that's right. I have to kind of cheat and cut corners and adapt to the the combat rather than the combat just being fluid yeah. and it i think that's different tough. from like a batman arkham where like if you get really good at like the free flow there's all these rules in place and it's very fair but like you just might yeah. be rusty hogwarts just kind of seems like a little bit broken does that make sense i only had like a week odd off hogwarts when i was away and i came back to it and i totally forgot like Following in the, the quest line is really easy because it's laid out. So obviously you go to the mark on the map. It's standard Ubisoft style, go to the big yellow marker. Uh, but combat is so confusing because you have the four different like D-pad layouts and you need you set them yourself. So it's, it's kind of how you structured it initially. And because they're all color coded, it's kind of like, oh, I use red. But red can be quite different. And even like purple, that's different. But one of them like pulls enemies towards you, one pushes away. In puzzles, some of them need a very specific spell. And it does do um, the classic now, the, the Sony classic trope now of if you, you're not doing it right immediately, the guy's kind of like, maybe I should use Leviosa. Uh, <laughs> like they, they give you the, the clue, much like God of War, pretty quickly. But yeah, I found it probably the most confusing because you set your own spells, but they're just color coded and a little symbol doesn't really mean that much if you've forgotten what it is. And you forget quick. Uh, there's like no muscle memory for this game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably one of the hardest games to get back into ever. So my question to you is, and I think I, I review a lot of games, not out of enjoyment per se, but out of necessity, as you were talking about before. Um, I really struggle with starting a game and not finishing a game. And mm. I'm curious to know if you have that same experience. Like if I start a game, I'll, I'll likely slog through even if I'm not like really liking it. There are occasions where I'm like, nah, I'm out. This sucks. Like, I'm done. But they're very few and far between. So where do you sit in that scale? All over. So if it's a Game Pass PlayStation Plus game, I almost never finish them. Like, I've tried uh, Woe Long the other day to see what it is because a lot of people, yourself included, saying how hard the first boss is and I thought maybe I'll give it a try. I got bored before I got to the first boss and I just deleted it. It's like, <laughs> meh. Um, it actually reminded me that's what triggered me to that I hadn't finished Dark Souls and I was like why am I playing a fake Dark Souls when I haven't finished the real one delete no time for this Often that's I the jump beauty of a game early. being free though yeah if I and bought that's something it, that everyone story. has but like as reviewers that's not something that sometimes I think people take into account like if you don't like something it's free to you but like it's not free to someone who's going to buy it so 
You really need to double down almost if you don't like it or think someone should invest time or energy or money into it, which I think sometimes gets forgotten. Absolutely. From a review point of view, you should assume the purpose of a review, right, is not really to talk about is this is this warranted as art, basically, as some people try to do. Uh, that's not really for a hundred hundred twenty five dollar game where people are reading your review to see if they should buy or not. So I think you need to assume they're buying it. They're not getting it in a subscription. They're not getting a free copy somehow. Should I buy it? Should I spend all this money? Sidebar. If, so Sorry. if I've done that, if I bought a game, yes, if I bought it, I definitely feel compelled to go and finish it. Hi-Fi Rush, another example of a free game. I played through a couple of hours, realized this is a fun game, but I don't have time for it. Delete. Um, yeah, a lot of games are like that. So I think that's what subscriptions have done. Games I have bought and haven't finished well, Pokemon, I'm yet to finish, but I, I feel like I need to finish it now because I'm so far into it. And I mean, Dark Souls I bought, haven't quite finished, but I think I will. But there's, yeah, I feel like that. Probably need to not start Sonic Frontiers, another one I bought recently. I played the first hour and I was like, oh, this is actually not that bad. I don't, you know, I'm, it's a guilty pleasure, the 3D Sonic games for me. But yeah, haven't had time to really play it. It's in danger of falling away and not getting back to it. The big, I mean, I think I will. When I get time, I think I will because I bought it and I, I want to play it. Um, the big one that I've given up on, uh, Horizon Forbidden West. I, I bought it. I started playing it. I tried to get into it. I just, I liked the first game, but I kind of feel like it was a one and done series for me. Like I, I don't need that again. A lot of people feel like that about Zelda. I know that. They've got their one that they like and they don't play the others. Um, that's not me. I would definitely play all of those. But yeah, I, I just, I got to a point where I realized I was probably like, somewhere between five to ten hours in and i was only playing it because i'd spent quite a lot of money on it and i felt like i should like it because i liked the first game but it just it wasn't clicking with me and i thought my time is also valuable give up move to the next thing yeah so sometimes yeah some, I think you need to call it sometimes and uh, on both consoles i have the little the section of, of what i'm currently playing on xbox it's down i think it's in the folder somewhere on playstation and yep. there is some level of satisfaction and acceptance when you remove game from that group it means i'm done with it i'm not playing it again uh and yeah so when that happened i could finally move on i could let it go horizon forbidden west to me was that game of like and and like this isn't me trying to be like this is just my opinion of the game it was kind of just monotonous like it wasn't enjoyable and the things that you were doing over and over and over again Mm. where like weirdly i think sonic frontiers is that kind of like Hogwarts style game that I was describing before. Like there's not a a terrible amount of skill involved in most of it. And it's kind of just like turn off the brain. Like you'll be able to go and explore and do the things you want and like earn progression and get achievements without having to like go through guides for like weird hidden collectibles and like weird strategies to defeat the boss. It's kind of just like an easy breezy and, like, that's a game that you could definitely just kind of jump back into. I was playing that at the same time I was playing Callisto Protocol. And, like, I was really playing Callisto Protocol because you need a lot of skills and it, you just kind of need to finish through. But, like, once I'd had enough of the taxing bit that I wasn't really enjoying, I'd just jump back into Sonic and, like, kind of, like, mellow out, if that makes sense. Yeah, so, there's... so I mean, that that's where you are bouncing between multiple games. But Callisto Protocol, another one I've not finished and given up on. I, like, I don't care. It's it Time's the factor. There's just no time for all these games. And you just have to call it sometimes and just play the ones you want to play. Used to play a lot more because of that. I seem to have more time. I don't know where it's gone. Just disappeared somewhere. Dog, uh, fiance, yeah. house, getting older, and the, and being more mature. Stuff. Yeah, well, that surprisingly, that happens more often. You kind of get home after work and you think, great, I'm going to play this new game. And then you're sitting on the couch, you got to make dinner, and then it's just, ugh, that's work. I could, like, work as in I need to think, and I need to figure out where I'm going, and what do I do, and too scary sometimes. It's like, it's like, ah, oh, just sit here and watch cartoons. Well, there you go. And, like, like with the case of, of Pokemon, like you were saying, I, I feel like the hours spent in something should play a factor as well. So, yeah. Like, and, like, the Hogwarts and stuff. These games are so big and so expensive, and there's so much to do. Like, I don't know if you necessarily need to finish it to have experienced it, per se. No. And, like, you might yeah. even have fallen off on the story because you're too busy worrying about the side quests and stuff. If you've put, like, 40 hours into a game and haven't finished it, air quotes, I still think, like, you've basically finished it for... Like, you finished it as, as your experience with it. You're wanting to go into it more... 
has yeah. a, a, an end point and you've hit that it doesn't mean that the story necessarily is ended but like i don't Finish know your experience There's there are games the... that i'll play and i'll skip yeah. the cutscenes because i like the story is garbage but like the gameplay is involved or engaging enough that i want to keep doing that until it's it's done and there's nothing else i can try so yeah I mean, there's mostly I give up and never return, but there's the odd time. I mean, there was, I started Metroid Fusion, Game Boy Advance, 2003. I apparently got two hours in and gave up. And then I finished that in 2021. Now I restarted because I'd not, you know, if I'd played that game two weeks ago, I wouldn't remember where I am, how this game works, let alone like 20 odd years ago. Uh, very rare time. And that's only possible because it's like on a cart that has the save file on the cart. Like if I was playing, I guess I could do that on an Xbox or PlayStation now because it'd be in the cloud. Yeah. So 20 years from now, I can go to my Horizon Forbidden West save and carry on from where I left off. But you'll have forgotten um, what to do and how to control out know, Aloy, so like and it'll be a different. Again. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the next generation. That's what they need to do. They need to figure out some way that they can get you back up to speed in like 30 seconds. Here's well, the story. Here's how to play. Surely you could just kind of like cut back to like the important tutorial bits because there's in modern games now there's clearly like here's the tutorial section and even yeah. in like the thing that we're playing that we can't talk about specifically like there are sections in like chapter let's say four or five where like you've gotten through the normal gameplay tutorial but it's like this section is definitely designed to get you used to the dodge mechanic or the parry mechanic per se like couldn't you just go through like playstation style where you can go like pull up those cards that show yeah. you like what your you know your percentage of whatever chapter or task you're doing and just kind of like save your state where you are currently but just kind of like reload some of the tutorials just to run through if you needed to maybe or that like will a tutorial happen. system anyway i could happen this generation that is a thing on playstation that just every game ever is still cross-gen so it's probably not worth implementing that yet but maybe when we fully cross over uh yeah maybe they could do that or even DLC that's like, would you like to try a tutorial? Would you like to replay a tutorial section if you've not played this game in yeah. X amount of time? Now, Elden Ring's going to have to do something like that, but they won't because it's going to be their whole thing. It's a real bastard and we don't care. <laughs> they don't care. That's, they, they, they like it if you're in, in pain or turmoil. Yeah. It's going to be tough. <laughs> well... Not to say that wasn't an engaging, interesting conversation, Ben, but obviously we're a little bit light on uh, on game specific game like specific direct game stuff. Um, They're so, all coming out very soon, so yeah. that was some good tips on what I should do because there's no chance I'm getting through all of these. Just play Zelda is basically what I'm hearing. There you go. So we're, we're game adjacent, is what I was trying to get at, and and yeah. game adjacent is is the series one conclusion the the entirety of, of the last of us on tv is out season one we're not going to talk about spoilers per se but you know if you're listening to this you've probably played the game and you know exactly what's happened and how closely it aligned game to tv show um you, you were kind of noting all of the people in in physical yeah. offices standing around real water coolers you know talking about this show as if it was like 1990 People, well, it's more just open plan office. People just chat wildly and you can... I've been spoiled for so many TV shows that I'm never going to watch. And I, someone dies in White Lotus or something. I've never seen that show, but... Well, someone always thing. dies in White Lotus. That's not even a spoiler. That's fine. Know. That's the first time. Well, they, they mentioned who it was. Anyway, I forget about that. doesn't matter. Uh, and so quite a, a vocal conversation about The Last of Us finale before I'd seen it, but I knew what happened. So they did, you know, they did spoil anything. Um, the general consensus very much dislike so none of these people had played the game i think one of them had a partner who had who was trying to not spoil it for them um and it's, it's also kind of hard to to talk about it without spoiling the second season i mean like or even someone, the first really even, well, or during it but like when well, they're yeah. kind of like what's to come um and you know to not give anything away because people are like that there is the the moment where joel's quite injured and people are kind of like oh joel never dies does he and it's kind of just a hmm uh like it's pedro pascal Sh it's, surely not yeah and so, and he didn't he if you you know you see what comes out of that that moment he sounds good um but yeah so it's it's interesting to see that reaction to it and i think neil Druckmann has come out quite defensive to some of the, the response to this he's very much been we're not going to change season or the story of last of us part two to season two but we might do it over two seasons instead of one 
Um, it's just about how do we adapt that into a TV show. I think acknowledging that a straight adaptation is not going to be as easy for season two as it was for one because uh, the second game had so much kind of one character on their own as opposed to the dynamic. Yeah. Um, it's definitely going to be tougher and it's, it's well, a revenge and, story. And there are two so different it's... perspectives and yeah. without getting into a whole bunch of detail, like I'd imagine that you it would be very hard to intertwine them and come up with a resolution like a season two resolution that carries on to season three that wouldn't have people just angry that it's just kind of this weird open-ended slight mess like you you need to see the pers- you need to see everything through one perspective and then yeah, another and I perspective. Think they, but i don't know if you could just do that in two seasons because i think they might and then they uh, might have the odd cut forward cut back whatever to kind of tease it that might be why they flagged it whether or not they do that i'm not sure yeah um yeah it'd be interesting to see i think with the with the time bef- if this season does happen assume they kind of film it maybe this year and it comes out next year at the absolute earliest i think they would have to consider making some changes like maybe not too drastic but with with how love uh pedro is and joel's story was very much criticized without giving anything away even how things happened to him could have been done differently and i think people would have been happier with that outcome then they might have to look at that like it's just It'll alienate the fan base too much. There's loads of people watching this who didn't play the game and they, yeah, not a fan of the finale and I get it. But on the other hand, it's it's a show which is quite different to a lot of kind of similar ones in that they've been pretty clear the whole time. There are no happy endings for anyone. Like this is a pretty grim world. There's no resolution that makes everything better suddenly. It's kind of everyone. I mean, the theme of the first probably five, six episodes is that character you like, they're definitely going to die. Like it's, Here's a new side character. He gets it's kind of like the the '60s shows that were like he's the monster of the week. It's just here's the character of the week that will die. Like yeah, yeah. Well, Grimchild. yeah, and that's kind of like I don't know. Talking about the games and not being specific, I really liked the first game, and by the second game, I was feeling like it was like a little bit gratuitous and like sort of torture porny and. Like I, I think I don't think a story necessarily has to have a happy ending at all times, but I think maybe there's a limit to, <laughs> to how many times you can just like beat on someone's like heart just mercilessly. Um, and Druckmann's yeah. come out and said like, oh, maybe there'll be differences. It's, it's not necessarily going to be the same thing, and like maybe they could do some like drastic change that's like completely rewriting what people think of, is happening in this timeline because it's a different timeline. Obviously, it's not. It's like the Star Trek thing. Like nothing they do in the TV show is impacting what's happened in the games. If you really like the games and liked how the story went, like that's you can go back to that. That's still there. This is yeah. maybe different. I don't think any changes made in the TV show really that ultimately very impact minor. anything that's happened. So it's still the same no. thing for now. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay that way. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Certainly very divisive. Um... And then he also came out to kind of, he basically confirmed without confirming that the the next game from Naughty Dog will not be The Last of Us 3. So he didn't say that, but he said he's heard a lot of people ask that and too late, we're already working on our next project and we're well into it. Which, what did he unless say? We're working on something that interests us, I think is sort of the quote. Yeah. Not, not was, fully the quote, but... It was not a fact-based show, but it, that's the gist of it. It was very much a, we always look at what interests us and we consider at the end of a project what we're going to do next. We look at everything. Uh, and I've heard that, I've heard you a lot that you want The Last of Us Part 3, but we're already doing our next project, which really implied it's not going to be that. Uh, and I'm sorry to tell you that it's definitely not Uncharted 5. <laughs> no. I think they should give it to someone else. It's still a good series. Hmm. I think I think it's probably something new. Like they they've made it pretty clear that they they don't want to get stuck on an IP too long. I mean, Uncharted was the king of PlayStation Three and probably Four until The Last of Us yeah. Part Two potentially, um, or maybe God of War took over that mantle. But it was certainly a massive franchise, and they were happy just to be like, "We're done." And you don't see Microsoft coming out and saying, "We're done with Gears of War for ten years," or Nintendo coming out and saying we're just going to arrest Zelda. Like it's the the iconic franchises normally keep on going even if they have to move developer. And it, it seems like that's not happening with Uncharted because it's their thing and they've reinvented themselves a lot, going from Crash Bandicoot to to Uncharted, totally different, and then to The Last of Us, way different again. Uh, I hope they do something a little happier. Like the the cheeky side of Uncharted made it a lot more fun to play. It was um, you know grim and deep sometimes, but it was generally pretty upbeat. I think that's why it was fun. The Last of Us very different. 
don't know if I want that again. Yeah. I don't know if it needs a third game, to be honest. Like, you could end it where it ended. Yeah. Well, and, like, I, I know that here are some generalist statements that aren't necessarily true depending on the, the studio you're thinking of. But, you know, like, you think of Rare now. And Rare now isn't the Rare that made no. uh, any of the games that you love. And why can't I think, like, Conquer is an example. Or, you know, if you were a Banjo-Kazooie person. Like, it's... I think Naughty Dog, on the whole... There's, there's people I know who've left. But, like, Naughty Dog, on the whole, is kind of, like, a, a, a relatively core group of people and like that's not even true when i'm thinking of like bruce strawley but anyway like let's just go with what i was trying to get at if you don't just keep producing the same game after game after game after game after game and try to reinvent yourself you're likely to keep that core group of creatives who are obviously really good at working together to make something but you're not just regurgitating the same cookie cutter template and you'll have people engaged and interested in wanting to be there Whereas if you, like, uh, as, as an example, Bungie just kept me- making Halo after Halo after Halo after Halo after Halo, people will leave because they just want something else. So you're still the, the developer in name, but not necessarily in, in function. So I think it's good to try to change it up and be, you know, the same yeah, group of people just doing something completely different. Here's our take on this genre. Here's our take on this genre. Here's a genre that we've come up with, you know, after all of our experiences, just doing something new. And... That's, I think that's a problem anywhere in, in all of entertainment. You know, we're, we're very set on sequels and requels and reboots and remakes. And having something new isn't necessarily bad. You might have to kind of, like, warm yourself up as a consumer into this new take. And, you know, you'll get a lot of outriders and, like, awful takes. But, you know, occasionally you'll get something good. So I think the risk is, is worth taking. Where Last of Us came from. Yeah, I think... Totally agree, and I think Sony structured their studios better than anyone else in that regard. And they, like Naughty Dogs, they're big, they're a big player, and they let them do things differently. Uh, the only thing is, I think maybe they should let someone else try an Uncharted. It doesn't have to be the same people. It could be just in that theme and a spin-off. That's probably the next step. Otherwise, you're potentially never getting a game in that series again, as opposed to getting 50 Marvel movies a year. You get none for the next 20 years. Like it's a, it's a different shift. Um, <laughs> Xbox do it the worst of anyone. They kind of say, all right, 343, you make this game only. You're only doing Halo. That's all you do. We've named you after it, so that's all you can do. Uh, the and even if you're, you're bad at it, years. you have to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's it's probably not the recipe for success. You're not letting them do other stuff. You see like even Bethesda um, kind of having Todd Howard's team basically make Elder Scrolls and Fallout and nothing else, and then they finally get to do Starfield. Now, it's going to take them forever to get back to those series because they take so long to make these games, but at least they've they've had the opportunity to do something new before Xbox owned them, of course. Whether they now get directed to do one of those only, who knows? Um, yeah, I think that's probably the misstep they've made with their big studios. No one has any idea what Nintendo does. Retro Studios hadn't released a game before a remake of one of their good games for like 10 years. Don't know what's going on there, but they seem different situations. Yeah. Well, and the good thing about Naughty Dog, I really like Naughty Dog's games and their design ethic. And like, I think, and it was even the case, I think, with, what's that one called? The one with, um, oh goodness, Elena and Marlene. Lost Legacy. That yeah. Like, that was not the core team, I think. That was a different Naughty Dog team. And I feel yeah. like that was a really good Uncharted game, a slightly different take. But like, Naughty Dog can give all of the design framework to yeah. another studio especially internally at sony to say like here's kind of like what makes an uncharted game now play with it and make it your own and that would be a really good experience i think yeah yeah absolutely so yeah oh, that's it well <laughs> looking forward to it i think we're done for this week steve i think that's about it so uh was it was we'll it take... obvious when we both just stopped talking and we hit a wall and nothing we're both nothing... just like you know what we we can't solve this problem please give us more uncharted naughty dog but we actually would prefer you do something new because every time you've done something new it's been great so i think that's the right choice for them uh until next week when we do get to speak about something old again which has become new it'll be all resident evil 4 all the time and whatever else happens so that's next week until then thanks for joining us and i'll see you next week steve what are you buying stranger Nailed it.